Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Oklahoma producers are busy harvesting their wheat and canola crops and they're also thinking about the progress of their summer crops and there have been some challenges. Here to talk about it is Josh Lofton, our Extension Cropping System Specialist. And, and Josh, we're here in your research plot. Tell us about some of the challenges you've had. Well, our, our challenges in the program have been no different than the growers around the state. We've dealt with uh, some, some really nice conditions really early in the planting season. A lot of guys throughout the state have got corn in on time and got it up and growing real well. And then essentially the good conditions went away. Uh, we, we were either really, really cold, we were too wet, too dry, and we've gone through these cycles of being uh, one of the three of those. And, and so uh, our program, as well as the growers around the state, have, have kind of met the same thing. Uh, the, good, the good news is, is that uh, from, from what I've heard around the state, uh, the rest of the corn has kind of gone in. Sorghum's kind of on that last leg. Uh, we're, we're starting to get soybeans rolling and moving around, especially on the eastern part of the state. It's been a little more challenging, but uh, the good news is, is, is we're up and rolling with a lot of our summer crops. And, and you can see here, it's, it's kind of really taking advantage of these, these timely rains and now this really warm weather to kind of let the crop get off and, and get going. Tell us about what's happened in this field. It's, it's a little spotty. I think that's how you've described it. Yeah, so, so what we have in this field is, is something we've had across the state, and it's been these spotty stands. Uh, it's something we've talked about at, at field days, uh, previous sun-up spots, and, and all that is, is the spotty nature of some of our crops. This could happen due to a, a couple reasons. We could have a variable temperature, soil temperature, and soil moisture, which has caused some of the crop to do really well and some of the crop to still be in, in its seed form uh, down in the soil. Um, and, and sometimes in, in a conventional setting, it's, it's been because we've had a nice soil, it's, it's rained really hard and we've gotten a crust. And that's something we always worry about planting right ahead of a, a rainfall event in conventional systems. However, it's not only been conventional, our no-till's seen the same thing. And that's where we run into those soil moisture and soil temperature issues, especially since it got so cold in April. Those no-till systems are usually hold on to water a lot longer and they're usually a lot colder. And, and especially when we get a lot of moisture onto that residue, if you have residue like wheat straw, or, or last year's corn or milo's residue, it can hold on to water a lot longer than the soil. So we've had hair pinning issues and, and various things uh, uh, among. The good thing is, is for most of our milo growers, uh, we're, we're, we're able to take advantage of those skippy spots because of the flexibility of the crop. Uh, and so we've, we've uh, kind of told a lot of guys that have stands that look like this to where you have these big periods of, of kind of gaps, as long as it's kind of evenly distributed through the field, you're gonna be okay. Our corn is the same way. It, it has that flex ear characteristic to where if it has a lot more light and a lot more moisture, a lot more soil to work with, those ears go from normal ears to really big ears. And so we have that flex characteristic. Soybeans the same way. So, so we have flexibility in our summer crops uh, to where if you have even skippy stands throughout the field, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, there are some spots that we've had in some of our trials to where the, the skippiness has been a lot bigger. Uh, we've had that in fields and we've gone ahead and told producers that if they wanted to overseed what they already have, I really don't like to kill a crop once it's up and going, but if they wanted to kind of even out that stand, go in and overseed that crop in those really big skips, and then kind of let the let the crop take care of the little ones around uh, around the rest of the field. Fill in a few of those gaps. Yep. Let's talk about the migration of insects and kind of what you're seeing and kind of what to put on people's radar the next few weeks and for the rest of the summer. Well, it's 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 something that growers aren't going to want to hear, but it's it's the sugarcane aphid. We have to be uh, kind of wary of that. Um, we've seen them move uh, a lot more uh, than they have the early part of the season and the most recent weeks if you go to if you go to google and you search my fields it's a, a website put on by texas a m they keep track of aphids around the nation um, it's it's growers like myself and tom royer and our county agents they they call and they they officially uh, say that they found aphids and they put them on that map so you can kind of see where the aphids are, are moving they've mo moved into that that central north texas area so they are coming into oklahoma how fast they're going to jump over that red river you know only, only time will 
will tell. But it's something that once your once your sorghum stand gets up a little bit more, you know, we're we're a little young yet still here. But once we get kind of in that boot stage and we start to see that head migrating up uh, and, and, and be more susceptible, it's when growers need to put boots on the ground and, and really get out there. Uh, and it's not to say that's not the same in all of our other crops. Last year was a really big year for Lepidoptera and our soybeans and our sorghum and our corn. Uh, we don't know if it's gonna be that way again this year or not. It was in some of our winter crops, so the Lepidoptera or the caterpillars are out there. We just have to make sure that we're, we're making getting in the field, putting boots on the ground, and actually scouting all those crops. And we have these warmer, windy days, so I bet that, that movement north, it, it won't be too long. Well, it, it, it can very well help that move and, and help them spread a lot faster than they would on, you know, maybe a calm, no, no wind day in, in the Great Plains. That, that rarely happens, though. <laughs> exactly. Josh, thanks for the update, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. And for a link to that website that Josh mentioned, we'll be glad to put it on the SUNUP website, sunup.okstate.edu.